This week I share with you the 15 best eats. I spent three weeks in Buenos Aires and I ate my way through the city. If you're from Buenos Aires or you've already visited Buenos Aires and I've missed one of your favorites, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. This is an all-inclusive community. We're here to share. We're sharing. Let's share together. <laughs> Let's get started. Number one, Don Julio. Let's be real. I'm not the only one who would tell my friends to go to Don Julio. Everyone will tell you to go to Don Julio. <laughs> Don Julio is the mecca for steak. All the beef at Don Julio is grass fed, raised in the countryside outside Buenos Aires. It's stored in a climate controlled refrigerator for at least 21 days to reach optimum maturity. Can't seem to get a reservation? Here's a little trick that worked for us. Their outside seating is first come, first serve. Pick a day or evening during the week and show up at least a half hour early before they open. That should do the trick and you should be able to get a table. Number two, La Cabrera. Another excellent choice for steak and a variety of amazingly delicious sides, La Clabrera is an easygoing establishment that delivers on flavor. We not only dined in, we caught up with them at the Festival of Flavors, where they served us one of our favorite churri pans. I can still taste that chimichurri sauce. Pretty bomb. Best sandwich ever. <laughs> Number three, we have Pizzeria Garin. Garin is an institution in Buenos Aires, operating since 1932. Normally, you'll see long lines of people just waiting for their turn at the traditional Argentinian style pizza and empanadas. Steam coming off of it. Oh my god, the cheese is absolutely delicious. There's so much of it. There's no sauce. Cheese, onion, and ham. Sorry, I can't eat and talk. And ham. Wow. Number four, La Casina. So let me just quickly talk about La Casina. So my first time going to La Casina, uh, they weren't open. Now there's a lot of stuff going on in the city. I think there were some protests going on that day. There could have been a family emergency. I don't know, but trust me, we went back and it was well worth it. Now, when you're looking at the sign, it's rusty. It's, it looks like it's been there a million years. I, I pictured, um, a grandma, an Argentinian grandma behind the counter making these amazing empanadas because I heard so many great things about them. And it's not. It's like three young gentlemen behind the counter. <laughs> They're playing great music. You know, I think you can see in the one shot, there's John Lennon behind me. Like it's a hip place and it's nothing what I thought looking at, um, <laughs> looking at the rusty old uh, sign. Take a look. You can't go to Buenos Aires and not try some of the best empanadas the city has to offer. These empanadas didn't only look amazing, they tasted amazing. And I think we both can agree they were the best empanadas we had. Next up, we have number five, Yaro Parilla at the San Telmo Market. I feel like Yero is the heart of the San Telmo market. With plenty of seating options, I loved sitting at the bar. It's where you could really enjoy the action of the kitchen. We enjoyed a few amazing dishes here, including grilled sausage, a fresh salad, a side of grilled pumpkin, and one of their steaks. 
nothing disappointed. Coming in at number six, Floria Atlantico. Disguised as a flower shop, Floria Atlantico is actually ranked number five on the top 50 bars in the world. It's a hidden gem, literally. You'll have your choice of many fancy cocktails, and the menu follows their long history of travel stories from the sea, with many seafood dishes, including... Crab and Look how famous is. I had to use both hands. Got a flaky outside. Warm and gooey inside. It's a seafood empanada. Is that common? I've never had one. I've never had one. This is great. It's not just seafood on their menu. They also have some other options, like short ribs with a side of vegetables and mashed potatoes. Number seven, Los Galgos. Looking for traditional Argentinian cuisine? Look no further. Los Galgos serves up traditional Argentinian dishes, which is a mixture of Italian, Spanish, and German favorites on one menu. The dishes are plentiful, so go hungry or order to share. It's a nice local spot that you feel welcome to enjoy. Number eight, Lamar. Before we get into Lamar, I know Peruvian is not Argentinian. I'll give you some backstory. I am married to a Peruvian man. <laughs> he loves his Peruvian food. But let's also remember Peru is like a cousin to Argentina. It's both South America, very close by, and these restaurants were great. So that's the heads up. So what I would suggest getting at Lamar, and it's because I've tried them and I know they're good, is you first wanna start with the Pisco Sour. Then for an appetizer, have the Calza. Next, dig into some ceviche, and then lastly, share the Lomo Santado, because that's gonna be a lot of food. Number nine, Pony Line. Located inside the Four Seasons Hotel in Buenos Aires, Pony Line is cool and sophisticated. Not the place you'd think you're gonna order a burger, but when you do, you'll be happy you did. It's genuinely one of the best burgers I've ever had. Number 10, La Brigata. La Brigata has a special place in my heart. It's the first place I tried an Argentinian steak. Known for such tender pieces of steak, you don't need a knife. They cut it for you using just two spoons. Oh my God, he's cutting it with a spoon. That's how tender it is. Yeah. Gracias. All right, folks, step in line for number 11. La Mazetta. La Mazetta has been serving pizza since 1930. However, you need to eat and go. No tables and chairs here. You might also remember La Machetta was highlighted on the episode of Somebody Feed Phil, where Phil said this place had the world's worst napkins. And it does. But the pizza is delightful. The cheese and dough is so soft. It literally melted mm. in my okay. mouth. I get the fush. Number 12, Crystal Bar. High on top of the 32nd floor of the Avalier Icon Hotel, the Crystal Bar is a sleek and sexy bar that has stunning views overlooking Puerto Mayero. There are no bad views here, so it's a really great spot to have a lovely date night. My husband enjoyed his steak sandwich and 
I enjoyed the sushi. Number 13, Chori. Back to the flavors of the Country Food Festival, we also got to meet up with the spot we've been dying to go. Chori is known for amazing Chori Pons. The Chori Pond sandwich is made up of grilled chorizo sausage and a crusty bread. Chori added mushrooms, lettuce, and mayonnaise. The sausage is actually smoked. Has mushrooms, has mayonnaise. Okay. Riding the Chori Pond train, we'll introduce you to number 14, Chori Panaria. So we were here yesterday and it was wall to wall people and we couldn't sit down at all. So we came back for lunch and we sat right down. So come back for lunch if you can't get here on a Sunday. Super busy. <laughs> Number 15, Nola. Cheers. Oh, that's good. Is that an IPA? Yeah. Yum. Love it. So we have a chicken sandwich, gumbo, another chicken sandwich, and some wings. If you would have told me I could be transported back to New Orleans with food from Nola, I would have told you there's no way. Cajun cooking is only done in Louisiana. But I have to say, Nola does it right. The beer was cold, the atmosphere was fun, and the food was delicious. I highly recommend you visiting Nola. this week's video on the 15 best eats. If you've been to any of these restaurants and have a comment, I'd love to hear from you. This is a sharing community. We like to share. So leave me a comment. And until next time, get out. There's a whole world you deserve to see. Are you, are you gonna be the center of attention today? George, is this you? Is this George.